The Australian, Stuart O'Grady, took another giant step towards winning his first stage race when he won every time bonus along the route. But in Reading, he was denied his final show of strength when the Russian champion, Vyacheslav Ekimov, broke clear. He held on for a one-second win. Overall, though, O'Grady is moving clear, 36 seconds ahead of Chris Borman, 48 better than Darius Baranowski, and 59 seconds in front of Neil Stevens, who is now fourth after the disappointing withdrawal of the American George Hincapie. So, to the penultimate stage seven, which starts from Chessington's World of Adventures, the first time a cycle race has visited the Surrey Park, where fun is the name of the game. Well, here at the Chessington World of Adventures, they call this Ramesses Revenge. And I didn't think I'd like going on the Big Dipper at Blackpool. I'm certainly sure about this one, as we climb up to the heights of the Adventure Park here. And we go down, and with a little gentle backflip, we go upside down. Oh. Oh. You're supposed to keep your eyes open, I'm giving up with that one. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, yes. Oh, 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 hey. no. No. Ah. Oh. Jesus. Ah. There's nothing to it, really. Now, can somebody... Well, there were a lot of brave people alongside me, and this is the route the riders now face today, 170 kilometres away from Chessington, and heading now to Rochester on Medway. And very early on, they climb Box Hill after only 11 kilometres. 81 riders now left in this race from the 108 that set out from Stirling, and among the non-starters this morning, Sean Yates. He understands he's going to a wedding this afternoon. The race now winding away, Paul, under excellent conditions. Lovely sunshine, little bit of wind. Certainly great, great racing conditions for the riders this morning, but a difficult stage in hand because they do face Box Hill after just 10 miles, and then towards the end, a very difficult Box Hill. At 13 kilometres, there was a huge crowd awaiting the race on Box Hill. One of the biggest crowds of the race. They were enjoying the spectacle, and the riders approached the hill at a speed. Good tempo riding by the riders. They went before a huge gallery of people. They were cheered all of the way. They had now completed most of the 900 miles of this race, some 1,500 kilometers. First over the top, bright voices, Chris Walker. What do you think of that then, lads? Very exciting, but uh, very brief, unfortunately. They were going pretty quick. Damn, damn sorry, quicker than me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know this hill, yeah? Oh, yes, very, very much so. And, uh, you don't quite come up with that quickly then, no? Oh, no, no, no way. Not me, not a fat boy. <laughs> At 30 kilometres covered, three riders had moved away from the main field, heading for the first sprint point of the day at Woodhatch. Three seconds on the line for them, and Jaim Fernandez of Festina took that ahead of Neil Hoban and John Tanner. Then at the 60 kilometres point, the race had regrouped. In the Mauve jersey, Jens Voigt was trying to win more points for his lead in the sprint competition. He was pushed out of it by the faster riders, and on the left of the picture, it was Julian Wynn for Wales who got the points. Graham Miller of New Zealand second, Chris Newton was third. 73 kilometres covered when this was a hard time for Max Nielsen. He was at the back of the race with the race paramedics, getting some help because he is, in fact, suffering from an asthma attack. And sadly for Max, he wasn't to finish the race. At 79 kilometres, Chuck Hatch the next climb, and again Chris Walker was in the action, looking now for second place overall in the King of the Mountains competition, and he was getting there. He was going over the top ahead of Julian Wynn and Nicky Sorensen of Denmark. But for Jonathan Voitus, no problem at all. The King of the Mountains title is certainly his. 111 kilometres covered and another breakaway. Going into Beltring, this time it was the rider from the Linda McCartney team. This is Rob Reynolds-Jones going across the line in first place. In second, Chris Newton and Matt Ellingworth in third place. Seven kilometres later, Rob was still the attraction, dangling just 20 seconds ahead of the field and going nowhere. But he was still picking up the prizes en route. The Linda McCartney team rider over the top first, followed by Chris Walker, Julian Wynn and Paul Esposti. As the riders approached Boxley Hill, in fact, Rob Reynolds-Jones had been caught and a new attacker was going off the front of the main field. This time it was the turn of England rider Glenn Holmes with just a short, small margin over the rest of the pack. A 
this was a tough second category climb. There was again a huge crowd to cheer the riders on. They've been on the race route all day. And then a question to race referee Jerry McDade of Scotland. How far behind were the field, says Glenn Holmes. And clearly, Paul, he was in a little bit of trouble with his gears as well. They were slipping. They certainly were. You can see what's happening here. In fact, I think the problem is that he can't get onto the smallest gear that he needs to go up this climb. A very steep climb, this climb of Boxley Hill, and he will be in severe difficulty. His gap over the main field, 12 seconds, but you can see the problems that he's having. Well, this climb is quite a steep, steep climb, and in fact, the field are closing in rather rapidly on him. 12 seconds is not very much anyway. And when you have to mess about with your rhythm like this, well, you won't hold this lot off for long. All of the GAN team at the front of the race, the red jersey safely at the back, is that of Stuart O'Grady. The Moog jersey worn by Jens Voigt, who throughout the week has proved a real powerhouse for this team, never afraid to do the work. Neil Stevens moving through finds himself in a little bit of a Gan sandwich there, and he's put back in his place. Meanwhile, back at the front. Glenn Holmes visibly struggling here to get that gear round. He's overgeared at the moment. The reason, I think, is because of that problem he suffered at the bottom of the climb here, trying to get a lower gear to get himself up this very steep climb. And this will not be good for him, because behind, the speed that those riders from the Gan team will be bringing the main field up this climb is going to pull him back right into the main field. It's almost as if he can't get his chain onto that back sprocket there and find his lowest gear because he is heavily over geared on the climb look at the smooth pedaling now of the pursuing bunch being led by neil stevens and they're going to pick him up very shortly they certainly are neil stevens has come into form over these last few days he came here to the pro tour after injury and the early part of the season an operation on his tendons and you can see the main field now have the rider from england glenn holmes in their sights and very shortly he'll be back with everybody else Yes, any hopes of an England victory at the moment, it does seem out of the question. The field is now coming up to him, a big mass of riders being cheered all of the way and they're almost willing Glenn Holmes to the top here, but it looks as though Brian Smith from Scotland is bringing the pack up to his back wheel. He certainly is. Two riders from Scotland retired on the race this afternoon, but Brian Smith certainly is leading them home this afternoon. And he was the only rider from a national squad team to make the front group on the road into Reading yesterday. Well, he's looking superb right now as he comes up towards the summit of the climb. Stuart O'Grady doing just enough to keep an eye on everybody in that red jersey, always prominent near the front. He really is steering his GAN team towards victory when this race finishes in Holborn. Certainly is. Chris Boardman always at the front as well, very attentive, trying to make sure that nobody gets too far off the front. And Brian Smith here hoping that he can, in fact, cause a split like yesterday on the run-in into the finish in Reading. But you can see a lot of riders there still very close in attendance. And O'Grady all the time just looking to make sure that he's never put into danger. The flag of St. George flying there, but no English riders on the front now as Brian Smith goes over the top in first place. O'Grady was second and Chris Boardman takes the third place, six points. So the riders now are going to regroup as they make the way from Box Hill, heading down towards Rochester. Our Simon O'Brien, of course, is already further ahead on the course and he's found himself a young supporter who knows a little bit about the tour. Hello, young fella. Hello. You looking forward to the race coming through? Yes. Have you ever seen a cycle race before? No. Do you think it's a good thing that the Pru Tour's coming through your area? Yes. Do you know any of the riders' names? Uh, one. Go on, who's that? Chris Boardman. You, everyone knows Chris Boardman, don't they? Yeah. Well, keep your eye out for him. He's yep. got a white shirt on with Gan written on it, OK? OK. Give us a salute for the Pru Tour. <laughs> a message from the people! South of Wales, welcome to Pru Tour! Are you excited about the, the Pru Tour, yeah? Me? Are you excited about the Pru Tour? Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> you are a wan! <laughs> you make me go funny! <laughs> well, enjoy the race! I will! <laughs> Beautiful view of the Medway from the helicopter as we rejoin the Pru Tour now as it heads towards the city of Rochester. There's a massive crowd down there where the red top tents await them and this little group of people, all potential employees, riding the last 10 kilometres of the course in aid of the Youth Action Charity. And let's hope they made plenty of money. 
But for the riders themselves, of course, they're still a little way out on the course and the people, and there is a huge crowd watching the race today, enjoying the publicity caravan, which travels about 20 minutes ahead of the riders, making the most uh, of some of the freebies on offer by the look of it as well. A little flag to wave, sir. Thank you. I don't suppose Festina are throwing out too many free watches, but at least you can learn the best model to buy later. And down at the finishing line, well, the crowd amply entertained. A little bit of Dixieland for all to hear. Fun and games down below in Rochester. If only the riders knew what really happened at stage finishes, but they've never seen that side of life. They are now working the way towards the finish, 10 kilometers out, and Jens Voigt, the sprint leader, on the front doing the work for Gann again. Certainly are, but this time they've been joined by the Matt, the big Matt team from France because they want to keep the race high, speeds towards the finish because they feel that their man, Jay Sweet, has got a very good chance of victory. Jay Sweet won a stage a couple of days ago, and if it all stays together here, Phil, he could get himself another one. And at the back of the race, Jonathan Vaught, as he's no longer needed at the front because he's won the King of the Mountains title. All of the mountains in this tour are now behind him. So he's watching proceedings, knowing that at the end of this race, he'll be receiving a nice check and a final King of the Mountains winner's jersey. Certainly will, but that's a very dangerous place to ride on the run in here into Rochester because it's very fast indeed. And you can see all of the time the work being done by Jens Voigt at the front. A little bit of help coming from the big Matt Aubert team now and again. And in second position there, the huge figure of Eros Poli, the tallest professional rider in the event here. All of these riders trying to keep the speed high, trying to keep a compact peloton because they wanted to go down to the big bunch sprint this afternoon. I must say, Paul, the Kemp police, aided by our own police escort today, have done a magnificent job to clear the way for these riders on a very difficult approach into Rochester. The crowds have been in their thousands all along the route. The big map boys are now trying to end a great day out for victory in their camp. I think we can just catch a glimpse of Jay Sweet. He's about 10 men down in that red jersey and yellow crash helmet, staying just far enough back to keep out of trouble while his team does all of the pacemaking. Well, it'll be an interesting sprint a head-to-head -head between Jay Sweet and Stuart O'Grady because although Stuart O'Grady is not a pure sprinter, he has proved to be very fast on this event this, this year because he really has got up there. The man wearing number two, the current leader of the event in the uh, red jersey of the Prue Tour leaders, and he really is uh, looking for a win this afternoon. Well, I think he'd love it. He's got one already at York, and that win gave him the red leaders jersey, and so far he's never looked back. And now he's sitting just off the pace while the big Matt Obervilliers team and his GAN teammates do a lot of the work at the front. And it looks as though Jens Voigt has slipped away from the head of this race at the moment. Uh, but I think, you know, he's about four or five men down here. Jens is looking for a place. There are only two vacant spots left on the GAN team for the upcoming Tour de France. And Jens is hopeful he'll get one of those and ride the first Tour de France of his life. And uh, I hope he does too. He's a really good bike rider. He certainly has been in a lot of breakaways in the Prue Tour this year, and over the last couple of days he's done an awful lot of work, and lucky for him, Stuart O'Grady hasn't been goes for the, going for those intermediary sprint points today because that has left Jens Voigt in the lead in that competition. But Big Matt certainly have sent one or two riders to the front, and you can see the speed here approaching around about 60 kilometres an hour as they come into town, and it's a very tricky little finish. Well, basically, it's downhill. You must be psychic, Paul, because here comes the check. You're almost right, 57 kilometres an hour. It says they are going right now, and a lot of high-speed riding being done indeed. If they keep the pace fast at the front, of course, nobody can attack from the back. That's the theory, and these riders are the domestiques, the teammates who help their team leaders win the race. And that's what they're doing now. They're trying to set up the victory for Jay Sweet on the French Big Mat team, while Jens Voigt is trying to keep the pace high, of course, for Chris Boardman and Stuart O'Grady. 
certainly everybody's starting to organize themselves quite a lot here. I caught a glimpse of a line of Australian riders moving forward there as well. Everyone trying to work together as we come past the banner that shows just four kilometers remain on this stage of the Pru Tour because all these riders want to try and make sure that their sprinters get to the front. And when the speed is so high like this, you really do have to work together as a team to bring your sprinter into the right position. It's been a little bit of a war attrition out on the route today. Some seven cyclists have given up this race today. The only full team left in, I think, is the GAN team now and also the team Bright Voice. So there are only two teams heading towards the finish in Hoban with all of their six starters still intact. It's a big credit, that too, for Team Bright Voice because they don't get the long-distance uh, training that these international first category teams get over in Europe. In fact, talking about Team Bright Voice, there are two riders from that squad coming to the front right now. I just caught a glimpse of John Tanner there coming round into first position. He's looking over his shoulder to try and see just where Chris Walker is because Chris Walker over the last couple of days has ridden very well indeed. And if it does come down to a bunch sprint, you can be sure that Chris Walker is going to be very close to the action. Well, Walker has moved up into second place in the King of the Mountains competition. He'll be pleased with that, but now the Gam boys are beginning to sell as they drop off the back. At, uh, they've had a long day at the front to control this race, and now it's going to be left, I think, uh, to one or two riders in Gam to try and keep a tight rein on it as we go down towards the finish. These are the narrow streets now as we pass through Chatham and head on towards the city of Rochester. Look at the movement down there now, Paul, as riders have realised they've all got a chance now. You can see the purple jersey there of Jens Voigt just going backwards through the main field. He's done an awful lot of work, just like his own teammate Eros Poli, and now all he's going to do is just get to the finish safely. Taking up the chase now for Gann right on the front, Chris Boardman, and a lot of Australian riders queuing up right behind him. Well, I think the Aussie team fancies their chances. This is their international team, which is based in Tuscany in Italy, and they started out well when David McKenzie picked up the first leader's jersey in the mountains competition on the road down to Newcastle. They've had a little bit of a rough time of it since but that's Mackenzie now in second place uh, sitting on the wheel of Chris Borman and I have to say Borman now doing some tremendous pacemaking looking very concentrated there picking his way through the streets of Ronchester what he wants to do now is keep the speed high now so there's no last minute attacks but the organization has come from the Aussies look at that second third and fourth position the Australian national jerseys on the wheel of Borman who's probably riding along at 60 kilometers an hour not wondering at all where his own teammate is now it's all up to Stuart O'Grady to get himself into an ideal position and he'll be held by Magnus Baxter but Jens Voigtville he's done his job and he's just going to cruise to the finish he said he has and he'll do just that it's Yen, uh, sorry it's Jamie Drew who's in second place David McKenzie is third right now just behind Chris Borman the Aussies lost their first team man today Steve Williams the national champion he retired early on which is a rather sad for him but now perhaps his teammates can settle this one and get a victory in the camp after all uh, sitting in a brilliant place Borman here Paul is giving absolutely everything to keep this race so high nobody can attack and he's doing it purely for O'Grady he certainly is. Let's not forget, at one kilometre to go to the finish line, Borman is one of the fastest pursuiters in the world. One or two riders, in fact, have gone the wrong way. In fact, that was the Aussies. They've gone right off course there. They've picked, read it wrong coming into that corner, and they will certainly miss out. Borman has gone round in the perfect position, moving up into fifth or sixth place there. You can see now the red jersey of Stuart O'Grady, but Borman, I think, has done his job for the afternoon, and the attack now coming from one of the Aussies. Well, goodness knows what caught the eye of the Australians there because everybody else went the right way. But right now, it looks as though we've got David McKenzie having a run for it. I think he was committed now. Has he been committed too early? Because really, the time to hit the front when you come to finish at this stage of the day down in Rochester is to hit the front just as you make the left-hand turn to approach the line. He still has quite a way to go and the pack are not going to let him go. They certainly are. There's been a reaction from Festina on the front there, trying to nail him back. He's only got around about 20 or 30 metres. He'll be looking for that left-hand bend. But look at the reaction behind now. This looks like Magnus Backstead coming up there with Stuart O'Grady right on his wheel. And that is typical because Backstead is the lead-out man for O'Grady, who again has hooked his braces on the saddle of the big Swede. And look at this at the back of the race. There is David McKenzie. He's now made his move too soon. He's been tailed off by the field. But as they line up for the finish now, Baxter is leading out Stuart O'Grady. Is it going to be win number two for the man in red? Jay Sweet is over in third, but they both think they've won. Which was it, O'Grady or Baxter? Both gun men are right there. 
And who was it? Well, let's find out. Well, there's no doubt, is the nearest the camera. Stuart O'Grady gets his second stage win of the tour. And that was the lead out from Backstead. And this is how O'Grady saluted his public. A one-two for Gann. So the result of the stage in third place was Jay Sweet. Fourth was Tristan Prem of Australia, so they didn't do too badly. Graham Miller was fifth. And Mauricio told me there in sixth place. Ekimov, the winner, day before, he got tenth. And Chris Newton, great, 17th. Stuart, uh, the Gann team have had an excellent week. And at the end of it all, it looks as if you're going to ride out... Uh, around the streets of Holborn as the overall winner? Well, the whole team's been a winner this week. It's not just myself. I mean, I think Chris Boardman had the legs to win this tour. Um, Magnus Backstead, three or four of the guys could have won this race, and uh, I was just the lucky one that got picked. Has it been an added uh, boost to your morale to be racing in, uh, in the United Kingdom? Because uh, for you, spending most of your time in, in France and Belgium, it must be fun to race somewhere where people understand you. No, it's fantastic. I mean, the whole, the whole tour has gone 99% um, uh, you know, really well for us. It's, uh, it's been a great pleasure to race over here. We've had a heaps of support, you know. Everyone's yelling out Chris Boardman, but we know that in their hearts they're yelling out Go Gann. So, um, yeah, it's been really good fun. A modest man indeed, but a great talent. O'Grady leading by 46 seconds now over Chris Borman. More importantly, 58 over his rival, Darius Baranowski. Further down, Baxter is ninth, Ekimov 13th. Chris Walker had a great day. He's 14th, but over five minutes back. Champagne all round, and most of these riders wearing the Gan colours, but they've got the leaders' jerseys on their shoulders. But Jonathan Waters is the winner of the King of the Mountains. Stuart O'Grady is the winner of the point. He's yet to win in the red and Jens Voigt get the sprint. So the crowds came out on this penultimate stage in their tens of thousands they saw a great race and those that came to Rochester saw Stuart O'Grady take the stage and I know that Stuart O'Grady would have loved his teammate Magnus Backstead to have got his first win for Gann. It wasn't to be. Now all that remains is the big finale of this race in the city of London in Holborn. If you can't be there to enjoy the spectacle then stay with us here on Sky. Goodbye.